I'm Amy Goodman with Sharifa Gokadus. And welcome, everyone. We begin today with a look at what the Obama administration has done to promote equal rights for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in this country. On the eve of Sunday's National Equality March for Gay Rights in Washington, D.C., President Obama once again pledged to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which bars openly gay men and lesbians from serving in the military. Obama reiterated his promise Saturday in a speech before the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest gay, largest gay political organization. We are moving ahead on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We should not We should not be punishing patriotic Americans who have stepped forward to serve this country. We should be celebrating their willingness to show such courage and selflessness on behalf of their fellow citizens, especially when we're fighting two wars. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to cut from our ranks people with the critical skills we need to fight any more than we can afford for our military's integrity to force those willing to do so into careers encumbered and compromised by having to live a lie. So I'm working with the Pentagon, its leadership, and the members of the House and Senate on ending this policy. Legislation has been introduced in the House to make this happen. I will end Don't Ask, Don't Tell. That's my commitment to you. But many queer activists were frustrated with Obama for not following through on previous vows to end Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In his latest comments, he did not offer any new timetable for its repeal. A crowd of some 75 protesters outside the dinner accused the president of, quote, all talk and no action. They urged him to repeal both Don't Ask, Don't Tell, as well as the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. While tens of thousands took to the streets the following day to continue the nationwide fight for equal protection for LGBT people in all matters governed by civil law, it's been described as the largest demonstration for gay rights in the nation's capital in over a decade. Among those who spoke was Lieutenant Dan Choi, a West Point graduate and Iraq War veteran. He's fa facing discharge under the military's Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy for revealing in March that he's gay. Now, I know that there are many things that are worth fighting for, and I've fought for many of them. And I will tell you that some of those are very, very expensive. But of all those things that are worth fighting for, love is worth fighting for. Love is worth it. Love is worth it. Some of us have come from very far places to be here today. You've sacrificed a lot, but love is worth it. Some of us have just come out of the closet this year. Some of us are still in the closet, but I want to tell you that love is worth it. We've sacrificed so much. Some of us have been rejected by our families and our communities and our churches and our workplaces, but I would tell you that love is worth it. And many of us have been discharged from the service because we told the truth. But I know that love is worth it. We love our country, even when our country refuses to acknowledge our love. But we continue to defend it and we continue to protect it because love is worth it. Love is worth it. If you believe it, say it with me. Love is worth it. Love is worth it. Love is worth it. Love is worth it. Like so many others, I joined the military because my country beckoned me. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. But when we're telling the truth about our love, our country slaps us in the face and orders us, don't ask and orders us, don't tell. Well, I am telling you that the era and the time for asking is over. I am not asking anymore. I am telling, I am telling, I am telling. Will you tell with me? <laughs> ask
masking is over. We will tell. Because in the face of injustice and the face of discrimination, patience is not a plan. In the face of discrimination, silence is not a strategy. My plan today and my plan tomorrow and my plan forever is to tell, is to tell, and we will tell, we will tell, we will tell. Lieutenant Dan Choi speaking Sunday. He joins us now from Washington, D.C., founder of Nights Out, a group of LGBT graduates of West Point. And joining us here in our firehouse studio is attorney and longtime gay rights activist Irvashi Vad. She also spoke at the Gay Rights March. She's currently executive director of the Arcus Foundation, formerly executive director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, author of Virtual Equality, the Mainstreaming of Gay and Lesbian Liberation. In April of this year, she was named one of Out Magazine's 50 Most Influential Men and Women in America. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Lieutenant Dan Choi, uh, why don't you start off by telling us your story? Um, yes, we see you addressing thousands of people in Washington, uh, but talk about where you grew up and how you came to the point you are today. Amy, I think it's so important, and thank you so much for having me on. People see some of those things that we say in front of large crowds, but they don't realize some of the personal sacrifices that get us to where we are. I'm originally from Orange County, California. My parents uh, are immigrants from Korea. They've only been here about 40 years. My dad is a Southern Baptist minister, and my mom is uh, a nurse in the maternity ward at our local hospital. Uh, that means she loves babies. That means she would love more than anything that I have a dozen Korean grandbabies for her. But, uh, you know, when I came out of the closet to them just earlier on this year, uh, a lot of people told me that I shouldn't do that. A lot of people told me, why don't you just, uh, why don't you just stay silent? Why don't you just be quiet and lie about it? Well, when I came back from Iraq, I finally understood what love was when I started a relationship, my very first one. And I didn't want to lie about that anymore. I didn't feel that if I respected my parents and I respect and love them, that that kind of a relationship should be based on anything other than integrity and full disclosure. They should be a part of it. So I told my mom, she said, you know, I love you, but gay doesn't exist. And my dad was you know, also very skeptical. He didn't understand it. So then I realized I'd only told them, and they've only known about 28 seconds, while well, I've known about 28 years. So I thought that it was going to take decades or maybe even uh, multiple decades for them to understand, much less accept anything. But about three days ago, about four days ago, right as I was landing here in, in D.C. in preparation for this march, I had a phone call with my dad. And uh, he said that he loves me and that he accepts me as his gay son. That's something I never would have expected. And it's been a crazy journey ever since we started this group of West Point graduates who are LGBT, as well as our supporters. We've been on TV telling the message that don't ask, don't tell erodes this nation as far as our values, as far as integrity. I've been on Korean. Christian conservative radio stations and TV broadcasts and my dad has seen all of that and it's just absolutely amazing and I, I look back on those people that say you know you should have just waited until maybe a, a more convenient time to tell him or maybe you should just wait until he died <laughs> in order to live your life uh, truthfully and I, I look at them now and I say I wonder I wonder what you're saying if I would have waited for that long for a right time would my parents would would they be accepting at this moment I will tell everybody else now is not the time to wait if you really respect these things in our country in your lives if you respect your parents if you respect the people you work with don't wait push tell them be truthful because you love them well 
Lieutenant Dan Choi, when we come back from break, uh, we'll find out how the military has dealt with you, and we'll also speak with Irvish Bad about the movement today, where it's going, about President Obama and his stance. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute.